Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another post-apocalyptic taste test. If you've missed the previous episodes of this series, I will direct you to the playlist above and down below. Today, I'm going to be tasting the contents of these very adorable cans. And these, while they may look like they might contain panda, do not. These contain bread. These are emergency rations that come from Japan, and they contain different types of bread. And the reason why there's a panda on it, it's a little bit of a play on words. Pan in Japanese is bread. Kan, can is can. These are can rations, and they are so stinking adorable. Now, there's a huge little subset of food in Japanese that are for emergencies, and they come canned, and it's because Japan is located in an earthquake prone area. So if you want to be prepared in the chance of an earthquake, which is quite high in Japan, then you can fill your pantry with lots of canned goods. Apparently these have a shelf life of three to five years, no refrigeration, nothing necessary, a little pop top on top. You don't even need a can opener. Now I recently tasted Japanese emergency ration cupcakes, which were in a similar kind of can. They were much smaller and more of a kind of Vienna sausage size can. If you haven't seen that video, that will be in the playlist as well. But these look like they're actual breads. This one is the strawberry bread. This one's the chocolate. This one is the milk. And this one is the caramelu. And this one is the kohi, coffee. And this one is the plain. So this is the plain. All right, so I have six cans here. I'm gonna taste them all, and I will also put a link down below to where I purchased these. I paid $60 for these on Amazon. I believe the price has gone up, but I will put the link down below in case you are interested. Besides tasting the bread, I'm also gonna be tasting this because we are in a post-apocalyptic situation and we need butter with our bread, and this is real butter powder. Now, I've never tasted this before, and this is a pound of real butter powder, and you can reconstitute this with a bit of water, and I'm gonna spread it on the bread. Powdered butter, really? I've had butter in the can before, which was surprisingly delicious. That was in my apocalyptic breakfast, and that's also in the playlist. So, let's go ahead and taste our bread and butter. The ingredients in the real butter powder is butter, parentheses, sweet cream, salt, annatto color, and non-fat milk solids. And the directions say that I can make butter by including one part of the powder to one part of the water. Sealed for my protection. So we keep our butter fresh by putting it in the refrigerator so it doesn't go rancid. Removing all the water extends the shelf life and it says this is best by Actually, 313-2020, which isn't really that long. Maybe if this was in a cold storage, maybe in a basement or cellar. If you guys have used butter powder before, let me know how you store it and what its extended shelf life is. Do let me know. Hmm. Smells a little bit like cake mix. It smells kind of buttery. Interesting. Oh, I bet this would be amazing on popcorn. <laughs> One tablespoon, two tablespoons. Let's just do three, just so I have enough to mix around here. Three tablespoons of the butter powder, equal parts of water. I'm just gonna add a little at a time to facilitate mixing. Okay, it's coming together. Feels a little bit gritty. That was just one tablespoon, so I'm gonna stop right there because I want a butter that's spreadable. If I add any more water to that, that's gonna be really runny. So one tablespoon to three tablespoons of powder. So that's a three to one ratio. I'm gonna let this kind of soak and sit up and I'm not gonna taste it until I taste it on the bread. I think I'm gonna taste this one first and this is the plain bread. The pan 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 con bread. Now the last time I had the cupcake breads in a can, it was very difficult to get the breads out. And many of you said, well, why don't you open it from the other side and relieve the suction? Now, it wasn't a matter of there being any kind of a vacuum or a suction. It was the matter of the cake just being a little bit too large for the diameter of the can. Now, if I run into the same problem where I can't get the bread out, I will open it from the other end. I just really wanted to test out the means that the manufacturer gave me. They obviously made it convenient for me to open from the top. Why would I have to use a can opener in that situation? So, crack it open. Ha! Immediately, this is different than the cup 
cake and I think it will be much easier to uncan because this one is upside down. So when we dump it out, the cupcake portion will be on the bottom and it should slide easier because typically when we make bread, the bread expands, so the top of the bread kind of crowns and widens. So last time when I opened the cupcake, the crown was on top and that was kind of getting wedged inside of the can. So this reversal of the bread inside the can, I think is going to be key. Mm, it smells good. All right, so let's pop this out. So there's the bottom of it. Let's just shake it out. And here we go. Look at this. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> That was so much easier and so much better than my cupcake experience. <sighs> what a pleasure. Just popped right out. Desiccant or oxygen absorber. It says very clearly, do not eat. A little bit of bread stuck to the bottom of the can, but look how stinking cute that is. In this little cupcake holder, so stinking cute. It smells a lot like Thanksgiving. You know those rolls that you can buy that need to be rewarmed and kind of toasted? That's what this smells like. Got myself a bread knife and let's cut the bread in half. Well, let's, let me peel it first. Let's see how well it peels. So it's coming out of its wrapper very easily. This is a very small portion, probably enough for, you know, one person. All right, let's cut this in half. And there it is, cute. Nice crumb, very typical of a white plain bread. It has a bit of a yellow cast to it. And let's give it a slice. Slices nicely. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminiscent of potato bread. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. The fluff or the crumb of it's quite nice. It's very much like a sandwich bread. I was expecting more of a crumb style like banana bread or something like that, a little bit more denser, more similar to the cupcakes that I had previously, which felt and tasted like they were leavened more with baking soda rather than yeast. While this feels and tastes more like a yeast bread, it smells doughy, it smells yeasty and it has the mouthfeel and the crumb style of more like a sandwich style bread. I like it. It's a little bit sweet, which is very typical of Japanese style bread as well. Hmm, good. Now let's have it with a little bit of butter. All right, I'm gonna smear some of this butter on there, which does not look like butter. It looks much more like cream. Okay, I'm not gonna go too heavy with it. All right, here we go. Whoa, it doesn't really say, but it's salted butter. It's a little bit odd. It has a buttery flavor, but it's very concentrated. And the mouth feels a little bit strange. It's not as creamy because it's watery. And it's pretty salty. So just go really easy on it. Don't put so much on. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I think this would probably be better applied in a dish. So if you're cooking something, if you're making a sauce, adding this to that, I think it would work better. I think what this has pointed out to me is that part of the pleasure of having butter on say corn or on toast is that melty mouthfeel as well. Well here it just feels kind of wet and it does have a buttery flavor, but it's, it's not quite right. Yeah, in a pinch, yes, but I think it's almost better without the butter to be honest. Okay, let's see how this toasts. So I'm gonna pop that in the toaster while I open up another can. So since I have this one in front of me, let's taste this one. And this is the caramel, the caramelu, no panda. I'm very pleased with the uncanning of this bread. A pleasure. Dun, dun, dun. Ha ha! <laughs> this one has a slight brown color to it. Oh, it smells great. This one actually smells a little bit like coffee. Hmm, smells delicious. I'm not even gonna bother to peel this one. Oh, this one has a little bit of a bubble inside of it. The color of this one in comparison to the white bread is a little bit more brown. This was a little bit more lighter in color. This one seems to have a pretty similar texture to the plain. Alrighty, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. In terms of level of sweetness, it's actually pretty similar to the plain. It's a little bit sweet. It definitely has a pronounced kind of caramelly coffee kind of flavor to it. Yeah, and it's okay. It's pretty strongly flavored. It does taste a bit artificial, but with something like a cup of tea, I think it would be pretty good. Mm hmm Or toasted? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, that toasted up beautifully. Now let's try our butter again on hot bread and see what happens. Doesn't really look like it's melting much, but let's give it a go. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say it's a little bit better on hot bread. You get more of that butter essence to it, but it's pretty concentrated. There's something about it that doesn't taste quite right because it's been dried. It's not fresh butter. It does have a buttery flavor to it, but it's also very milky. And similar to say milk powder, it tastes like milk, but it's not gonna be the same because it's been dehydrated. How could it ever taste like the real thing? Similar, similar kind of vein. But again, I think the application for that really is to be used in dishes. Now this toasts up beautifully. Mm-hmm. The outside is nice and crisp. We've got our bread inside, which is kind of squishy and tender. Delicious. It just needs a little bit of jam. Scrumptious. Like that a lot. Toasted. But you know, bread in general when it's toasted is just sublime. Alrighty, let's try this one next, and this is kohi no panda. This is kohi or coffee flavored. Just wiggle them out. Oh, that one's a tight fit. Oh my gosh, look how stinking perfect that one is. Oh, I don't even wanna cut it, it's like a little mushroom. You're so cute. You're like a macaron. You've got this little like feet thing here. Go. Oh my gosh. It's like out of a cartoon or something. It's so perfect. Oh, this one has a really great coffee smell to it. Coffee bread, I don't know that I've ever had coffee bread, like coffee flavored bread. I've had coffee cake before, but that doesn't have any coffee in it. Hmm, curious to see what this one's like. Let's cut this one like this. Let's cut off its head. Cute. I think cutting it on the cross sections are probably a better way to make, say something like a sandwich, because you can get more even slices. Oh yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I just had a sip of fizzy water. All right, let's give the coffee bread a taste. Here we go. Hmm. This one surprisingly has a little bit different crumb to me. I'm not sure if that's because of the way I sliced it. I'll slice it the other way and see. It tastes a little bit drier has a little bit of bitterness to it, which isn't surprising because that's from the coffee. And because of that bitterness, it tastes a little less sweet. Hmm. Interesting. Rather than using this to make a sandwich, it would probably be something that would be served with butter or just jam alongside with a cup of tea or something, or coffee. Hmm. This one I don't like as much. I like the caramel one better. Let's cut it this way and see if it makes any kind of difference. Mm -mm. Yeah, this one definitely seems a little overcooked. So let's have this one next. And this is the milk no panda. This is the milk flavored bread. So it's gonna be similar to the plain, I imagine, just a little bit more enriched. And as opposed to the plain, it's got a cream colored can. <laughs> that one's beautiful as well. That one might be the most perfect one yet. It has a nice golden top. And this kind of just ejected itself out. Ooh, this one slices really nicely. Definitely more moist than the coffee. Little air pocket right there. And if we compare it to the plain, it seems to have a little bit of a whiter color, not as yellow. Mmm. The crumb on that's a little bit more delicate, soft and tender. It just almost more like a cake rather than the plain one, which seemed a little bit more bread-like. But in the vein of a sandwich bread still, very soft and tender, but the crumb is a little bit more just fragile. Mm, good. The flavor is just as sweet as a plain, just maybe a little bit more buttery. Oh, I like that one. I am liking these bread in the cans. 
I've had bread in a can before and it's the New England style brown bread, B&M makes it. Comes in a pretty large can or canister. And that style of bread is definitely more like a quick bread style. I think it's leavened with baking soda. And the crumb is much tighter, denser, and doesn't have that great yeasty flavor as these breads. These breads are better. These are really good. I'm impressed. Next, let's try this one in the adorable pink can. And this is the strawberries. Not a very strong strawberry smell whatsoever. Let's see if it's pink. Let's see, I hope it's pink. It's not very pink. It's still stinking adorable with this little mushroom top. Give it a slice. Oh, it has a very kind of gentle pink hue to it. If you compare it to like the milk bread, it's slightly kind of almost orange. Mm, mm-hmm. Mmm. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised by that. I didn't think I'd like this one, but it has just a slightest little touch of strawberry flavor, but it doesn't taste necessarily artificial. I was expecting it to taste like strawberry pokey or strawberry quick that kind of fake strawberry flavor. It doesn't really have that strong of a strawberry flavor. It's just very subtle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's nice. And lastly, I have chocolate, which I anticipate will be one of my favorites. In a very cute brown can with little speckles on it, maybe it'll be chocolate chips. Hee <laughs> hee, yes indeed, I see one chocolate chip right on top. Okay, let's give this a slice. Not very many chocolate chips in there. Mmm. That's nice. That's like a chocolate essence. It's not fudgy, it's not cocoa-y, but it just has this kind of scent of chocolate essence. And maybe that's partly due to the fact that there's not a lot of sugar in this, just a little bit of sugar. Same level of sweetness as all the other breads. It's definitely not a cake. Mm -hmm. I guess when I think of chocolate breads, I think of something like a babka, which is pretty much dessert. You've got bread that's been yeasted, and then you've got swirls of decadent chocolate in there. So it definitely makes it feel more of like a dessert. While this just feels like a little bit like a snack, lighter, not so heavy, just a bit of sweetness, but not really cocoa flavor, just chocolate essence. Yeah. Not bad. But surprisingly, I think I like the strawberry one more. I am a chocolate head. I love chocolate, but I love the subtlety of the strawberry flavored one. It's kind of a nice surprise. It's just a little bit there and then toasted. I feel like it won't be so overpowered. This, it's fine, but I think this is actually better. And in terms of my favorites, I think milk and plain were my favorite. Strawberry probably would be next. And then caramel then chocolate, and then coffee would be last. Kohi wasn't my favorite. So there you have it. Emergency Japanese bread rations. Pretty impressive. The bread was excellent. The quality was excellent. The price tag, maybe not so much. And the graphic design was stellar. I love this. So stinking adorable. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye! Cannibalism.